sweet love. Renew thy force, be it not said thy edge, should blunter be than appetite which but today, by feeding, is allayed, tomorrow sharpened in his former might. So, love, be thou, although today thou fill thy hungry eyes even till they wink with fullness, tomorrow see again, and do not kill the spirit of love with a perpetual dullness. Let this sad interim, like the ocean, be, which parts the shores, where two contracted new come daily to the banks, that when they see return of love, more blessed may be the view, as call it winter, which, being full of care, makes summer's welcome, thrice more wished, more rare. Sonnet 56. Um, happy Father's Day. Um, yeah, what a great... I, I don't know. Uh, in New England, it is like... this is it's, it's really timely that this one has this kind of summer-winter connection because it is very summer-like today. It's like 90-something today. Um, so I've retreated to the basement where it's much cooler. Um, yeah, Sonnet 56. Um, I like... I, I tend to find that when we... De when Shakespeare deviates from his kind of standard, like, let me tell you how wonderful the fair youth is, um, which this has deviated from. This is, he, he doesn't really, you kind of think he's addressing the fair youth with sweet love, but he's talking about love the feeling, love the construct, um, and expressing frustration in that love is not easy in its uh, effects, I guess. So... Hunger, you can expect to be hungry tomorrow if you don't eat. Your body, it, 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 it's very simple. When you don't eat, your body will eventually get hungry and then you will eat. And it's this back and forth nominal on-off kind of simplicity. Um, and love can be not that. Um, but that's because love is just much more complex um, than a simple like bodily urge. Um you know, it's, it, love takes cultivate, love in the form of a relationship, a true connection with another human being, right? You, you, you need to cultivate it, and it is a living thing that takes attention and care and effort, and it's not as simple as an itch that you scratch when it's itchy. It's, it's more complicated than that. Um, and so, I find I find Shakespeare in a sonnet like this much more relatable in lamenting that aspect of love because it is frustrating um, to you know it, it, it and it, because it is not a logical thing in the way that hunger is kind of logical um, it is a source of frustration you know if you are in if you are feeling if you fall in love with the wrong person and either they don't treat you right or they're, you're not right for each other. It can be this terrible source of like a lose-lose pain where you're like, when I'm with them, I'm not happy. But when I'm not with them, I'm not happy and I miss them. And so it's, it's that, that's, you know, that, that, that's what comes with something as complicated and wonderful as love. You know, I guess it, it's got a high ceiling and a low floor. Um, as a, as a construct. And it's inherently going to baffle you because it's this kind of, it's a very, uh, human thing. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, this was, uh, this was a nice thought provoking little song. So, um, I like what he kind of deviates from the norm, um, and gets a little more contemplative. Um, I find that it was, uh, uh, it made for more difficult, uh, scansion and, and meter. It didn't, I, I find that the, the sonnets that are like, let me tell you how I love you, kind of, they, they, they scan simply. It's ba -bum, 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 and just kind of flows very naturally and easily. Whereas something like this, it was more jilted, and there were lines that had eight, uh, uh, there were lines that had 12 uh, syllables instead of 10, and they, it, you would, there were lines that changed thought partway through the line. Um, even the first line, sweet love, renew thy force, be it not said, thy edge should, you know, it, 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 that 
like last third of that first line is a new thought and that makes for a weird it's this kind of shifting back and forth um mind like headspace that you see in later Shakespeare's more complicated characters like Macbeth, like Hamlet, like King Lear, that is reflected in the way they sp in, in in the way the poetry comes. It, it it is not simple, flowing, easy. It is jilted, and uh, you know oh, the Winter's Tale is another good example of it. Um, uh, uh, Polixenes, I think, is the king that gets really jealous. I may have that name wrong, um, uh, but. Uh, it's yeah it's 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 really um it makes for uh interesting and engaging poetry when you have a mind at odds with itself so uh yeah sonnet 56 um i'm most of the way through uh the hollow crown uh uh henry the sixth part one um i'm probably going to do some sort of clifford and Clifford's son monologue. I find that the at least this piece that I'm watching the the it, it seems like it's really condensed and just kind of rushing past a lot of stuff. Um, although actually, you know, I think there's a really great scene. Um, the the first scene we see uh, uh, the future Queen Margaret. It was really great. I thought in that uh, in the that um, Hollow Crown um, production. Um, so if you haven't seen that, I highly recommend it. And it's really interesting to watch it in the order that I have because I had seen the Richard III, which is kind of where you see Margaret at the lowest of lows, and now you see her at the beginning, and it's like, oh, geez, yeah, this... She goes on quite a journey. So, um, yeah, next weekend I think I'm going to do, for the end of June, a, uh, a Henry VI Part One um, piece. So, yeah, uh, and then straight into Henry VI Part Two. Um and the War of the Roses um, cycle for uh, for the rest of the summer, pretty much. Um, yeah, that's all I got. Thanks for watching. If you haven't called your dad, call your dad.